Hello and welcome back to Stock Market Weekly. I am your host, Evan Medeiros, for Friday, June 28th, 2024. Let's get into it here with stocks getting rejected at all-time highs. Friday, we had this nice rally underway. First couple hours of the session, we were green. We were up about a percent in the NASDAQ, in the S&P 500. Things turned around, turned south, went red, closed near the lows, and we firmly sort of rejected those highs. Now, it wasn't a full broad brush because we have the Russell 2000 that did manage to close green on Friday. But generally speaking, that large cap tech trade did reverse on Friday. Semiconductors setting up what could be a bear flag. Now, look, it's too early to call that definitively, but they are now consolidating sideways. If you recall from last episode, we did highlight that semiconductor weakness. We're going to talk about the follow-up today. We had Nike breaking to four-year lows on 27-year high volume. That's right, 27-year high weekly number of shares traded highs this week for Nike. We're going to look at that chart and we're all going to spend some time looking at some recent trades that we put on here across our trading system, some of the things that I'm looking at. So stick around. All right, we're back. We've got some charts in front of us. TC2000, that is the charting platform we're using throughout this video. It's a platform that we support here at The Trade Risk. What's really special about TC2000, I think, is where it excels is its stock scanning. It's curating uh, stocks based on specific technical patterns. It's really good at real-time processing of uh, technical bar-by-bar -bar price action relationships, indicator relationships. So that's what I spend a lot of time helping traders find themselves, refine those types of patterns. We've got also a lot of downloads for this platform on our website. So check us out at thetraderisk.com. And I think there's still a coupon code in the description of this video that'll get you uh, 25 or $30 off your first month if you are a new user. So let's get into the numbers here. I can't remember the last time I saw the returns so flat and unanimously similar here across the board. Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ all basically down 0.05% to 0.1%. So a very, very kind of hallmark summer boring trading week out there. There was some, of course, movement happening this week, but uh, ultimately the stock market closed exactly where it opened for those three uh, sectors or indices. And if we look at the Russell 2000, this definitely had some movement to the upside up 1.25%, still lagging over the past month, but nice to see a little bit of a catch-up trade happening there in small cap land. If we take a look at volatility, basically volatility coming out of the market, you can see the VIX now at 12.44, down three quarters of a point this week. NASDAQ vol uh, at 16 and a quarter down also about three quarters of a point this week so very kind of sleepy quiet grinding action here which is kind of what we expect and have been talking about as summertime is in full effect here if we take a look at sectors there's basically two spots you had to be energy or communication services up a percent and a half and up 0.85 percent everything else was red this week uh, not by a whole lot there were a lot of sectors kind of just down slightly but uh, consumer discretionary rounds out the third spot and on the downside it was utilities it was materials it was staples those were your top three losers this week down about a percent and a half now if we take a look here at our sector trends, there's really not a whole lot of uh, new insight here that I want to highlight. Uh, there's still lots of sectors that are kind of picking their lane right now. There's some choppiness in financials, industrials, right? There's some things that are staples, right? We, we talked about some of those sectors last week that were trying to make the turn up, that were trying to you know, participate in this market and not let it be just technology. Some of those sectors are still kind of floundering and picking their lane. We did get a turn up here in energy. Energy is a stock uh, or is a sector that uh, we took a position in. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. And biotech, generally speaking, still on the up and up. Now, if we take a look here at market breadth here, we take a look at 52 week highs, 52 week lows. You can see that this ratio still pretty much in check here uh, for the most part, just sleepy, but you know, glass kind of, uh, I don't even know if it's a half full, maybe glass quarter full is the, uh, is, is the, is the proper analogy here. You know, we are still getting more stocks hitting 52 week highs than lows, 
but not by a very large margin, not by an impressive margin. Once again, like we've been talking about here, until we see a spike, a meaningful move in either one of the directions here, right? Whichever way this ratio tips in a more meaningful way, I think will give us some more context clues and set the direction. But for now, we're in sleepy, you know, it's kind of sleepy time right now. Again, there are some stocks working. It's pretty narrow out there, but there are small pockets of things that are kind of grinding and in their established trends. So no big change here. Again, you can see pretty lackluster week on the right-hand side dials, about 40% of stocks or so up this week. Now, shout out to IBD. They help make the show possible. So thank you, Investors Business Daily. That's also another link we have in the description of this video. This is their IBD 50 top 10. Not sure I refreshed it this week, but you can certainly take a look here at some of uh, the stocks that they've curated, some big winners on this list, uh, generally speaking, and some mixed performance this week. So check it out in the link in the description of this video, excuse me, you get access to their IBD digital subscription and you can start curating those stocks on your own watch lists. Now, moving on to commodities here, you can see pretty lackluster results here as well. It was crude oil that was really the only thing that was working this week in terms of the big commodities we're tracking up 1.2 percent uh, gold was up marginally dollar index was up slightly this week but copper silver ag bitcoin natural gas everything firmly in the red here this week natural gas hitting the hardest down eight percent although close to follow is bitcoin which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video down 6.7 percent so not that smooth of a ride here in commodity land as lots of digestion takes place and last but not least if we look at treasury yields you can see they were up across the board mostly on friday a lot of knee-jerk reactions kind of taking place on friday where treasury yields started to move back up they're still in a little series of lower highs, lower lows over the past uh, couple of months. And uh, hopefully they stay that way if we want to remain as uh, optimistic as we can on U.S. equities. So let's get into the charts here. Let's kick it off here with the S&P 500. You can see uh, as I look on my chart, we've got this big old ominous looking tail over here on the S&P 500. This is a weekly chart once again, but take a look here at the rejection. Most of this action taking place on Friday, quite frankly, because I believe Friday uh, looks pretty similar to this in terms of the candle here. It probed all the way up to the high here of 52.23 in the S&P 500 and then closed towards the weekly low range. So you pretty much got uh, Friday's action driving most of this weekly range. And if we go back to this daily chart here, you can see that it doesn't look as um, you know uh, consequential perhaps on the daily chart but Friday was a day to take notice. I think it's uh, reasonable to say that anytime you get a move, uh, intraday move this wide and you have it occurring as a rejection point of all time highs, you want to take notice of it and the volume was on upper heavy volume relative to average, right? So we're still summertime trading, nothing too tremendous in terms of shares traded, but clearly, you know, a little bit of reaction here. If we take a look at the near term, you've got a nice range uh, to keep front and center. If you're a short term trader, you're kind of paying attention to the last eight days of trading, which is basically sideways, nowhere and overlapping. So I think follow through next week will be the key, right? Uh, when you have summertime ranges like this, you do tend to get a lot of kind of knee jerk removes moves that don't quite get that follow through. You kind of get a sudden burst up in one direction and then there's no follow through. There's no momentum or liquidity to really drive that trade forward. So let's see next week if sellers are out here and uh, able to drive and continue on the selling intraday selling action that we saw here on Friday. For now, uh, again, the trend is still up. Let's not, um, you know, let's not get too ahead of ourselves on wanting to call the end of this trend. I think we've got a small short term signal here to pay attention to. Maybe you're lightening up. Maybe you're putting on a hedge, um, you know, million ways to manage this, of course. But Let's see if that technical damage kind of creeps in here below 54, 45 or so. That would be our first little warning flag in the S&P 500. The NASDAQ 100 is pretty similar, right? So if we take a look at the Qs here, 
Let's actually start it off with that weekly chart. You can see once again, you've got basically back to back weeks now where the market tried to continue higher above, uh, let's call it 482 or so in the queues. And that was rejected, rejected twice now. So you've got the tails up top. If we go down to that daily chart again, you can see uh, we're kind of stuck in no man's land, really. It looks like the market just may want to digest here for some time, okay? And that's what we're going to want to be paying attention to next Monday. Do we get that follow? through selling right how aggressive do they follow up this turnaround friday here so that's what i'm going to be looking for again trend is up we've had a nice run there's been lots of good gains to celebrate here in a lot of the major indices so a little bit of a cool off period really shouldn't be all that surprising russell 2000 was the standout this week again it's in a different kind of holding pattern here and it is most certainly a holding pattern because the russell 2000 has gone nowhere all year long uh still don't see that changing in the short term daily chart again you're trying to lift back up here so it's doing a little bit of technical work looks like it wants to maybe move back up into the you know mid 205 or so uh, in the short term. But for now, uh, it just seems like a little bit of rotation into some of these sectors. So that's the high level there. Nothing too, too exciting, but certainly Friday session, a notable one. Let's move on to some individual stocks and some trades and opportunities that I'm currently seeing out there. So first off, I want to talk just briefly here about Nike. Nike is uh, experiencing quite the move here. 22% down week. And look at that volume, 182 million shares. Let's just zoom out here on how far back you got to go. Like I said at the beginning of the show, not lying. Oh, I'm going to sneeze here. 27 year high. I believe that's 27 years. Let's see. Yeah, 27 year high. If we take a look here at our... Um, rolling returns layout this is a pre-built layout we have in tc2000 put this on a weekly chart so what we like to do this is a the whole reason this this layout exists and i find it useful is we like to look at daily movement displayed relative to atr so basically looking for something that is ex actually experiencing a big move right sometimes you say oh five percent is that a big move well it depends on the stock right depends on how it normally trades so we have daily moves displayed in atrs and then volume displayed relative to um well, this says one month average, but in this case, we're looking at a weekly chart. So it's going to be uh, more like a five month average. But you can see both of these metrics here off the chart for the magnitude of this week's move. So clearly the market wasn't pricing in what Nike delivered to it, which which I believe was just some softer guidance, maybe, maybe more. I don't have the full, full story in front of me, uh, but clearly a bit of a kind of a washout and uh, continuation move lower. So it's now in a 57% drawdown. Uh, if we go back to just the specific chart itself of Nike, and we take a look at where it could be or where it could be headed. Uh, it's almost getting back down towards these uh, COVID knee jerk reaction lows here back in 2020. So it's not quite down there yet, but uh, it's it's coming back into some pretty significant areas of uh, prior support down here. It's also kind of the retest of the 2015 highs if it gets down into the uh, upper 60s. So uh, perhaps some more to fall uh, for Nike, but clearly this is a, an outsized move as uh, investors just not uh, happy with the results here. So Nike, a uh, great company long term, but probably is going to be broken and in the penalty box for some time. So it's uh, something that is mildly interesting to me, but uh, I don't think I've ever owned Nike. Um, and I'm going to have to look a little bit more into those reports to see if I actually would want to. Now, one other stock that's going in the entirely opposite direction is uh, FedEx. FedEx here on Friday, or I should say the week first, is up 18% on some very heavy volume. This is now pushing not quite to all-time highs, but getting back up towards these 2021 highs. If we go to the daily chart here, we had a big gap up on Wednesday of this week, uh, and then we saw more follow-through, good volume coming in as this extends itself up. So tale of two different stories here, of course, uh, both around the same market cap, actually, FedEx and Nike, uh, I believe. Uh, Nike's price still a bit bigger. Um, but generally speaking here, some, some pretty big stocks making big moves this week underneath the hood. So I wanted to at least highlight that. Don't have a position in either and uh, no big call there after those big moves have been made. Let's talk about something that we did recently buy. It is a sector and it is energy. 
XLE. Uh, XLE here is trying to make the turn. It's a little bit early, but uh, it's trying to break this series of lower lows, lower highs. Our Merlin trading system uh, purchased this. Uh, actually, it purchased the ERX. Yes, ERX is what it owns. So this is the 2X uh, leverage ETF uh, energy sector ETF. Uh, so we are in at uh, $62.50. 15 cents. So Merlin likes to get in a little bit early. It's go it's going to be uh, entering in as the trade is still falling, but it looks like there's some signs of turning. So uh, ERX is a position that we are established in here looking for higher prices. Uh, first target up around 70 or so. And uh, I don't have the trailing stop in front of me, but it's probably somewhere down here in the mid 50s is where we would throw in the towel and exit this trade. So energy, uh, I think, is interesting a little bit of volume starting to come in here again it's consolidating it's trying to make the turn as we talked about crude oil is working itself higher here so we'll see if that trade can work but that's a recent position for an intermediate term swing that we put on let's talk about tesla so tesla was the the call out last week right so remember last week we highlighted this consolidation this was our mystery chart this is what we spent some time talking about towards the end of the video it's a very volatile stock very polarizing stock and it had gone nowhere for about a month and a half or two months and whenever you get that volatility compression especially in sort of a charge stock like tesla then uh, you tend to get those breakouts that vol expansion which can lead to those directional moves and lo and behold this week while markets were broadly down or you know tech stocks were kind of mag seven stocks were flat to down uh, we had tesla up 8.13 percent so this is why we pay attention to technicals they can give us clues when stocks are potentially getting ready we didn't know which direction this was going to fall you know move towards we didn't know if it was going to roll over or expand to the upside but if you're prepared then you know certainly you can jump on board that move pretty quickly here. So hopefully uh, that video last week was helpful, but Tesla up 8.13% this week, looking good, some volume coming in, and uh, we'll see if that can continue. Now, a couple of other areas of the market that I wanted to talk about. The first is Bitcoin, and then I'd like to talk about some miners. So Bitcoin, if you recall, was something we talked about two weeks ago. It was around the 65K area and we put out a video in our Stock Market Weekly series and we basically said, look, um, it looks like things are softening up here. It looks like the market is setting up for a retest of these May lows. And that uh, seemed to follow in a pretty quick order. Our Galahad trading systems, a different trading systems, our longer term trend following trading system, had a position in Bitcoin. In fact, it's had a position in IBIT going all the way back to February of this year. And it finally exited that position in the, I don't know what the specific price was, but it was somewhere in this 37 or so range. And it's finally flat. Now it would get back in um, pretty quickly if Bitcoin can set back up. And I still think Bitcoin is in uh, a decent spot here over the next 12 months to, to have some favorable tailwinds. But short term, uh, it's coming back down to retest those lows. Now, the question's just, did we you know, successfully retest? Was this, was this the capitulation here on Monday the 24th? I think that's the question right now, uh, which we made it down to about 58.3. So we didn't quite get down to the May lows, but we got pretty close. And so there's a chance that that was the kind of the capitulation low here. I'm not ruling out a full-on retest of May and, and potentially even down to 55K. I think we're kind of in this window here where Bitcoin could kind of catch its footing and stabilize and then potentially make a run higher. I think we're in this 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 kind of zone right now where it's pay, you know, it makes sense to pay attention. Uh, so that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Our auto, our rules based trading system, Galahad does not have a, a position in this anymore. Uh, I still have some exposure in Bitcoin itself. But I think the more interesting trade right now is in uh, two miners. So the first is Mara, uh, M-A-R-A. -A. This is the largest Bitcoin miner. It really hasn't gone anywhere in quite some time. And this is very similar to the Tesla setup, right? Where you have uh, a very volatile stock that is compressed sideways and getting sandwiched, getting squeezed downward here. And this leads to 
volatility expansion. We just saw it in Tesla, and it seems like it's uh, you know really kind of setting up here nicely in in Mara. Uh, M A R A is the ticker symbol. You can see that uh, over the past uh, you know month or so, month and a half, while Bitcoin has been grinding lower. Mara has been just really moving sideways here between 18 and $20. So this is this feels like it's getting fueled up for a move. Uh, our Merlin trading system, ironically, is in this as well. It purchased back in April. So it's uh, entry price and this was 1728 uh, in April and it's still holding this position. It did sell um, half into some strength here, but uh, it does still have a position here and I have uh, some call options on this as well. So this one's interesting. It really, you know, I want to see this get over 20, um, 20 and, you know, clear above 20, get some volume, get a breakout, get a squeeze going here. Cause there is a big short interest as well. That's what I'm looking for. If, um, you know, if Bitcoin does, you know, have to capitulate back down to, uh, 55 K or if it does wash out here next week, then, you know, all bets are off. Mar is going to get hosed. I, I would imagine, right? Like I would imagine that this is definitely going to get, uh, a roll over here and fail to break out. At which case I would exit my calls and uh, Galahad, I'm not sure if it would get triggered on its stop, but it certainly has a stop in place. So Mara, I think is interesting. Nice tight setup there. Again, it's a volatile stock, so just beware. Uh, but I also want to highlight CleanSpark. Uh, CleanSpark, again, I do have a position in this very small kind of starter position. Uh, but this is this is another Bitcoin miner, second largest out here, and it has gone nowhere for almost all year. This has been trading between, you know, call it 15 and $18. So this is stuck sideways. It's a very volatile name. It's got a short interest as well. Uh, but it hasn't gone anywhere and this is where I'm starting to now pay attention this is the weekly chart uh, about as sideways as you're gonna find out there so there's some fireworks around the corner just don't know which direction and that's what I'm gonna be paying attention to so clean spark Mara have positions in both but uh, we'll see if they're going to turn into uh, to, to winners or if I'm going to add to those positions or, or bail on them. Uh, and that could easily happen. It could happen as early as Monday. Right. So just full disclosure, I could be out of these positions on Monday, uh, you know, as early as Monday, just if things go south. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that's it. That's uh, all I have for this week. I figured I would, you know, showcase some different trades from our trading system. Some of the things that I'm personally watching as well. Hopefully you found the video helpful. If you do, you can feel free to like it and uh, share it out. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in every Friday, long form market analysis, just like this. We got links in the description of the show. Have a great weekend and we'll see you back here in July.